Um, so the question for you, Danny, is how does Tolkien's Middle Earth invite us on an adventure into the divine imagination and explore the kenosis of the secret fire? Just to start off, I would say you've asked the wrong person that question. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, is there a microphone? There's a microphone right over there. <laughs> Lack of microphone, yeah. There well, we go. Ta-da! Avelina Balestri, I must return the gratitude for the fantastic work that you've done here. Thank and you. In all the ways that I know in my heart, it was really a woman who could do this. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> Someone needs to keep the men in line in this world. Okay. Yes, it may, yes, very much. <laughs> Mythos is so wonderful because it seems to reach the Logos, what I'm talking about, the Word of God. So human experience, which is recorded in mythology, there seems to be a bridge where it touch, it's touched upon by God's Word, and they meet and they mingle. And I think that's where Tolkien is getting all his uh, joy uh, and, and all his truth from. Um, so I just, I'm going to try and unpack the title so that when you go home you say, I don't have a, I don't want to swear to the children, I don't have a clue what this man has talked about. Um, so kenosis, I would say at the core of uh, Tolkien's vision is the, the power of humility, which is wonderful because he said, everything I have learned about beauty and its simplicity and magnificence, I have learned from the Blessed Virgin Mary. Which is really reflected, I think, in the way he portrayed Galadriel in the books. More than that, I would say, honestly, the word that he uses, the quote, is everything, yeah. everything I have learned about beauty. Now, most people will come to Tolkien and go away saying, I was enriched by the beauty that was present within this work. He says, everything. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a profoundly Catholic statement, to say everything. Yes. It means that he's devoted his whole being to the Mother of God. And also, I would say, in addition to the figure of Galadriel, the figure of Elbereth, mm -hmm. is Mariam, I mean, the, 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 uh, the hymn to Elvoreth that the elves are constantly singing is very much like Lingard's hymn. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, on the star of the ocean, star oh, of the sea. Oh, definitely. A lot of, of, a a lot of uh, evocative language with regards to oceans and the sea, I notice. There's a lot in that. Um, I've even seen parallels, like when I was, you know, um, reading the story in. Arwen, probably more the, the movie version of Arwen. I know it's kind of strange and unorthodox, but um, just the the idea, I guess, if you see, you know, take this little play with it, but you see the idea of Arwen as being the person who kind of is initiating Aragorn to go do what he has to do, fulfill his mission in order to reforge, you know, the sword and restore the kingdom, all of this, um, even though it's at great sacrifice or cost. Somehow I saw when I was originally looking at the character, she's actually been one of my favorite characters. I know that's unorthodox too. <laughs> but um, that, that in a way, she sort of has a Marian element of that sort of um, infusion of, of to, to fulfill a mission, the infusion, the, the sort of the grace. She's the giver of grace. And, and the, the mission precisely is coming at the point where the sacrifice and cost is the most. Yes. So he gets this from his Marian understanding, mm -hmm. but then he also gets it from his love of the Eucharist. Right. And he said, you know, he says, out of the darkness of my life, so much frustrated, I put before you the one great thing to love on earth, the blessed sacrament. Mm -hmm. And he says, why? He says, because there you're going to find death. Mm -hmm. Which just doesn't sound very appealing, does it? But he says it's the divine, makes sense, the divine the paradox, that which brings life. And that is the kenosis of the secret fire. That's what I'm trying to get at. Kenosis is the humility. Right. Okay, the humility of Jesus who have self, in self-abasement on the cross. Mm -hmm. It is a profound gift. When you say the word kenosis, what definitely jumps to mind um, in my own sort of spiritual life is um, the agony in the garden. The agony I almost in the feel garden. like it's a pinnacle kenosis moment. Peter kind of Jackson. I learned yeah. Jesus from Peter Jackson, which is strange <laughs> because he didn't learn Jesus, but he communicated yeah, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but he managed to pull it out through art. And that's Frodo really means thing. king of peace in Old Norse. Ah, Frith. I didn't yeah, know so that. there's this great, it's a story about giants and windmills, mm -hmm. and the giants are defeated through the baking of bread. Oh. Yes, there's a whole oh. catastrophe behind the name Frodo. Um, but in any case, the kenosis of the secret fire is my understanding of the Lord of the Rings from a kind of spiritual, intuitive sense, oh. is that what he's really getting at is a twofold, Marian vision and a Eucharistic vision that really the world is redeemed through humility yes. and the divine paradox of death bringing life and all the narratival arcs within the narrative <coughs> are communicating the seminal 
absolute truth. Oh, that's a really beautiful analysis. No, really. I might be wrong. No, I, I, I very much, you know, concur. I think that that is, um, I think maybe there's something like there's a beauty in, in Christian subversion that I think is, is present. That's in. probably, if I had a Twitter feed, uh, that would be... Steal my tweet? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd like to use that. I mean, that's a great slogan for my life, I think. <laughs> To pay me for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to pay for this conference. That's true. That's true. <laughs> the, the thing to remember is that Tolkien was very familiar. I mean, he understood what he was doing, mm -hmm. and everything he said is to be found. I mean, uh, to disagree with you in this sense it would be to disagree with him because he said pretty much the same yeah, thing. Um, what he speaks about Lemmas, for instance, the way of the elves. Oh, yeah. He likens them directly in his correspondence to the Blessed Sacrament. Okay. But the longer you rely on it alone, mm -hmm. the more it strengthens your will, and so on and so on. It also kind of, yeah, it also kind of reminded me of these saints who have sometimes lived for years on the Eucharist alone. You know, the rare exactly. cases. But... Exactly. Exactly. Well, the, the one thing also that comes to mind, I'll ask you about. Yes. It's always seemed to me that the secret fire was kind of an oblique reference to the Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 What do you think about it? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, the title is there just for me to unpack in a whole uh, book, I'm hoping, at some point. Um, but yes, very much the secret fire is uh, at the core of the creation of Arda. And um, I think there's a great sense in which the whole of the joy of the evangelization that can be found in Tolkien's vision is that it's really just, there's a radiance that was Caldecott's mm -hmm. word. There's a light that pervades everything. Mm -hmm. It's um, all, yeah, it's but that's wonderful because Catholics don't evangelize by sort of, you know, being too open about it, I don't think. It's more... Um, a kind by melting. Well, it's, it's not really our style. I think we're more in this kind of subtle art of mm. Marian presence uh, more than Very anything. Very feminine, actually, when you think about that. Well, sort of, or at least traditional, like, notions of femininity and the spiritual. Yeah. My intuition <laughs> that what was at the core of Tolkien's vision was a deep love of Our Lady, which he admitted, and the deep love of the Eucharist, which he admitted. And this taught him the divine paradox, which is that death brings life. Um, really, if we want to refine our, our dignity uh, in the West, we have to take the path of the Hobbit, who is really just an English Catholic on his way to certain death. But the certain death brings life.